If there's something we NASCAR fans are good at, it's not appreciating something we like when we have it. We are probably the most nostalgic fan base in all of major sports, and I don't think it's even close. And I think it's a motorsports thing in general, but we NASCAR fans take it to the absolute next level. Look at how many people like myself who are in their 20s and 30s opine for the early 2000s. And while there was a lot of good about it, there were things that honestly we kind of overlooked look with those rose tinted glasses. And today I want to look at seven things about current modern NASCAR that we're going to miss in a decade. Now, to define what modern NASCAR is, I am going to say everything from post 2020 or at least stuff that kind of ended up coming into this era, the post COVID era. So we're going to look at 2021 to 2023 with it. Let's get to it. First off is the next gen car. The next gen car at the moment is, I would say a mixed bag. People really like it at the intermediates. It's improved the racing a lot and the super speedways have improved immensely since the start of 2022. Unfortunately, the road courses and short tracks, the high action tracks that fans had either warmed up to or loved from the beginning are complete ass. And there's no other way to put it. But I do think that much like the way the Gen 6 and COT were, we are going to hate it in the moment. We're going to rip on it. We're going to be hypercritical of it. And then come, say, a year, two, three after it, we're going to miss it. Now, why do I say this? Well, because it's happening already with the Gen 6 car. People are looking back, especially at the 2014 season, the high horsepower season, but also the 750 horsepower years. And there are even some, I don't know what's wrong with their heads, who are looking back fondly on the 550 package. Seriously, if you're doing that, get checked out. Your head's probably been hit. And the thing is, I think the next gen car is a big step towards the future of NASCAR, but NASCAR can't help itself but to change constantly anymore. And when you look at the last two generations of cars, neither lasted a decade. The Gen 6 lasted nine years from 2013 to 2021, and the COT lasted five and a half years with half of 2007 to 2012. All it takes is one amazing season with the next gen car, and 2022 was good, but not amazing. It just takes one of these seasons, like a 2014 or a 2011, that will make people remember this car fondly for generations to come. And if the eighth generation of cars stumbles out the gate, this will only continue more. Next up, we have Alex Bowman in the 48 car. Alex Bowman has been overshadowed by his teammates. You have the most popular driver, the most talented driver, and probably the one with the biggest potential now all as his teammates. Many over criticize Bowman as he isn't a superstar. He might have superstar fan levels when it comes to NASCAR standards, but he by no means is somebody who year in and year out is going to compete for a championship. He is just a solid, good driver. He has seven wins at his time with HMS, and he is constantly in the center of fan theories and rumors to be booted from the 48 car for the next best guy. He was rumored when it came to Kyle Busch. He was rumored with Kyle Larson. He was rumored with you name it. It's always Bowman out of the 48, even when he signed a multi-year deal with the team. And I'm telling you now, eventually he's going to be out of the 48. And even if the driver after him does better, people are going to miss him being in that ally Chevrolet. And we should appreciate him while he's here. Because if that injury ends up messing up his career, we are definitely going to miss how good Bowman actually was. Third up is the scallop scheme. This was the scheme on the 22 car from 2011 to 2021, and it was really one of the only constant schemes that never changed in NASCAR in this time. And the thing is, schemes nowadays are constantly changing with new sponsors, and it gets to the point that nobody is memorable, and we don't like that. Except with this. Now we don't like it when the scheme stays the same. We hate it. And I'm telling you, in the years to come, people will appreciate that this was one of the only NASCAR paint schemes that went from the COT era almost into the next gen era. You're going to miss it at some point. Next, we have the Charlotte Roval. The Roval has been a staple of both NASCAR and the playoffs themselves since 2018. And 
Over the years, especially in the recent years, rumors have circulated that the oval Charlotte layout will come back in the playoffs and the Roval will be no more, only to be used when absolutely needed. And, well, I'm going to tell you now, people will miss the Roval, even though the Oval's racing is leagues better in comparison. There have been major memories made with this layout of track. I know people who have went to the Roval races and the Fall Charlotte races on the Oval before it, and they say that this layout and this race reinvigorated what was a dead race for many people. So, I do think it will be missed by many hardcore fans who at first absolutely hated it. In the same vein, we have the Chicago Street Course. The SVG win alone in the rain will make this a memorable race, and everyone will look back on that moment fondly, even if it didn't all get executed properly. And at the moment, the maximum for the contract is set for this race to be here for five years if the extension is used. Though, most think that's probably not going to happen as it looks like the city of Chicago is eager to move on, even though it actually helped them a lot economically. And more than likely, it's going to be gone in 2024 instead for Chicagoland Speedway, which is probably the better long-term play. But while still controversial, those who are positive will be a lot louder as it's gone rather than those who are negative now that it's here. And I think that those will be the prevailing thought of it in the NASCAR zeitgeist. Second to last, we'll have the Auto Club Speedway as it is today, or I guess yesterday. See, the Auto Club Speedway will either be reconfigured into a half-mile short track or completely gone for good. And unfortunately, that basically means that great racing will be replaced by either mediocre to bad next-gen racing or none at all. And this track I am telling you, had amazing racing in the Gen 6 era and the start of the next gen era. There were great moments throughout most of the 2010s, and because of that, people are definitely going to miss what, at a first glance, honestly, was hated. And I think that no matter what happens to this track, whether a layout change or complete demolition, its legacy as a positive for NASCAR has been cemented for a long time. Now last, but certainly not least, is Kyle Busch. Let's face it, Kyle Busch is getting older, and while he is probably nowhere near retirement at the moment, he will more than likely be out of the sport entirely as a driver by 2034. And he is one of the all-time greats. He's somebody who's in the top 10 of the all-time wins list, is one of the few multi-time champions left, and he has earned that rank of being called a GOAT. And the thing is, he has a great personality when it comes to standing out from the crowd. Better than anyone else coming in right now, he is not someone who is a cardboard cutout of every other driver. He's going to go and fight your favorite driver. He's going to be an ass to the media, whether they deserve it or not. He's going to be Kyle Busch. And I'm telling you, many people hated him, many people are warming up to him, but so many more are going to miss him when he eventually retires, as for nothing else that he will be the last real tether outside of maybe Denny Hamlin to that peak golden era of popularity for NASCAR that so many of us entered into the sport on. But with that, I'm going to pass it on to you. What do you think you're going to miss about today's NASCAR when it's gone? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more fun and great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.